which is fascinating, at least for me it is. Uh, there's, obviously, there's a reason why I greeted you in various languages. Um, I may have forgotten a few, I'm sorry, or if you're, I don't know what other languages I missed, but I apologize. <laughs> but anyway, language is fascinating and it is essential. Without it, we wouldn't be able to communicate with one another and create a sense of community. And it's constantly evolving. Meanings change, new words are added, and some words just simply fall out of vogue, while some old words come back into fashion decades later. And I know this because sometimes Father Jim Barrett, you know, he, he would just utter some old English word that I've never heard before. <laughs> so sometimes old words, like from decades, uh, decades and decades past, they just come back. Uh, and, you know, they are brought to new life. Language is organic. And when it comes to foreign languages, things can get even more interesting. Learning a foreign language can be fun, but it can also be daunting. And you're bound to get lost in translation. You know, in my parents' birthplace of the Philippines, for instance, there are over 150 to almost 200 different languages, not dialects, but languages spoken. So what might seem like a simple, innocent word used in one region of the Philippines can sound very offensive to a person from another region of the Philippines. So you have to be careful. It's no wonder English, American English, by the way, American English is widely spoken in the Philippines. And in fact, it's the primary medium of instruction in education there. Another example, you know, when I was traveling in Germany, I was in Germany twice, uh, just this past year, a group of us Americans were quite humored by a sign that we saw above the doorway of a typical Bavarian house. And the sign said, and I'll spell it for you, S-C-H-M-U-C-K. Yeah, to us, to us Americans, our American ears, you know, that's a pejorative term meaning, you know, like a stupid or foolish, obnoxious or detestable person. But in German, that word, which by the way, I'm going to pronounce it the German way, okay? It's schmuck, schmuck, S-C-H-M-U-C-K, schmuck. In German, that, that simply means jewels or jewelry or a, like a beautiful ornament. So if you guys call me a schmuck, I, I would just love you and hug you. <laughs> to be called a schmuck, uh, that would be a compliment. And here's another, here's a third example. Um, in the Hispanic culture, I don't know if we uh, have any uh, Latinos here uh, this morning. Uh, but in the Hispanic culture, it's quite common to use the phrase uh, mi negro, mi negra, no, mi negrito, mi negrita, which literally translates to uh, my little black one. Now, to an American ear, that sounds racist, right? But it's not. It's not. In Spanish, to call someone uh, uh, mi negro, mi negra, it's a term of endearment. It's actually calling someone darling or sweetheart or honey. It really does sound a little better in German than, than the literal, literal English translation. And because Filipino and, and Latin cultures are very similar, uh, again, I would not be offended if you called me that. Uh, so please, let's not get all, all bent out of shape over something that we don't fully understand. Parts of today's gospel from Matthew can easily be misunderstood or misinterpreted. In it, Jesus seems a little rude. Oh my God, Jesus, rude? Yeah, how could that be, right? That's not the Jesus we know. Yet he calls a Canaanite woman a dog or implies that she is one. Even the disciples were annoyed by her presence and wanted Jesus to have nothing to do with her. 
But you see, we, we have to understand, though, that Canaanites were ancestral and mortal enemies of the Jews. So the disciples' reaction was common. But nonetheless, it's a far cry from how we expect Christians to react. We expect Christians to react with love, pity, and compassion. So in this story, the Canaanite woman is begging Jesus to cure her daughter. But Jesus, Jesus initially brushes her off by saying, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Now, if we take this out of context, especially in English, it's easy to mistake this for an insult, but it's not, it's not an insult. The exact word that Jesus uses here in Greek is konarion, which means small dog or household pet. Very different from the unclean stray dogs that would roam around the streets and eat garbage. So this is kind of similar to what I was saying earlier about uh, the Spanish phrase, mi negro, mi negra, you know? It may sound offensive at first, but it really it isn't. So it's easily misunderstood. And what's so endearing about this woman's interaction with Jesus is her witty yet lighthearted remark. She says, true, but even the dogs get their share of the crumbs would fall, which fall from their master's table. Consequently, Jesus grants the woman the blessing and the healing which she so much desired. And at this point, we can see in Jesus the loving, compassionate, and humble person. Unlike the stern and distant Jesus who kind of brushed her off initially. You see, Jesus just wanted to draw something out of this woman. But he knew, he knew that she had an indomitable faith. And he praised her for it. Her faith is a faith which worshipped. It's a faith which grew in contact with Jesus. A faith that began with a request, but ended in prayer. It's a faith with a smile and a cheer that can light any gloom or darkness. And moreover, Jesus praised her because he knew that she understood something else. And what is that? Well, she understood or knew that Jesus did not see her as some outsider who's not worthy of God's love. She didn't care whether Jesus saw her as a dog or a person or the worst sinner in the world. She didn't care what he saw her as because what's more important was that she regarded the Lord as God and she acknowledged Jesus as the Lord of her heart. And this was her greatest faith. And she was rewarded for it, for her believing in his goodness and his compassion and his love and concern for her and for her daughter's plight. We have much to learn from this Canaanite woman. Like her, we too have to believe that Jesus could make a difference and would make a difference in our lives and the lives of our loved ones. We have to believe that Jesus is not just a possible helper, but our only hope. We also have to learn to put aside our pride, just put it away. Be humble, don't judge by exteriors, as God looks at the heart, we should too. And like this Canaanite woman, we have to remain persistent in faith, no matter what others think, as long as our motives are pure. For this kind of trust and confidence in our Lord, God will bless us and help us to grow in our faith. And as the saying goes, there is no faith which has never yet been broken, except that of a truly faithful dog. Thank you for participating in the digital liturgy today. The digital ministry touches the lives of many people, as does almost 80 other ministries here at OLPH. Grateful for the community uh, that connects to OLPH through this digital forum 
It's unbelievable how many people are able to access the liturgy and other events because of this ministry. Please consider supporting OLPH. All of your sacrifices help to sustain this parish and to keep moving us into the future. Thank you very much and keep watching.